So today, if we, we did have another another uh, presenter, but having a few issues trying to log in. So my name is Akil with Salsa Digital, and today I've got uh, two of the four uh, from the T9 project. So I'd like to welcome Joseph Zhao, technical lead, and Alistair O'Neill, the product owner for GovCMS. Now, if we can get Yvonne Norris, who's the project lead for the for the project team, um, we'll see if she can get on. Otherwise, yes, welcome to the panel today. Um, as you may be aware, that Salsa Digital are the service providers for GovCMS. And we're the first ones to see and triage many of the questions that come in through the GovCMS service desk. So we thought we'd take this opportunity to take a, a quick chat to the project team here and ask some of the burning questions coming in about D9, um, as it's probably you know everything that's uh, around D9 at the moment. And I'll start off with some of the common questions we see coming through to the service desk. And we'll also have some time at the end to uh, answer some live questions. So please just feel free to post in the discussion uh, and we'll try and answer those questions towards the end. So I'm just gonna dive on in, if I can just go to the slides. Excellent, okay. so. I guess uh, this is the first one's probably for you, Alistair. So, when does Drupal 7 have end of life? Thanks, Akil. Uh, so, Drupal 7 is one of the longer ones um, from a lifetime perspective. Uh, it's not actually going end of life until the end of 2022. So, that one's a bit longer in the tooth for people. Uh, <laughs> not exactly sure why Drupal made that decision. Um, but those who are sort of working in a Drupal 7 space have a bit more time up their sleeves when thinking about redeveloping a website or building something new. Excellent, excellent. So I guess coming to the next one. Get everything working. Cool. And of, course, yeah. <laughs> and of course, with this one, uh, Drupal 8 is end of life sooner than Drupal 7. Um, a bit of an interesting decision that was made. Um, nonetheless, <laughs> with that in mind, we've got options in that space going forward. Um, but Drupal 8 is looking to be end of life come the end of next year, so 2021. So luckily from a Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 move, it's a bit more simple and straightforward. So if anything, we probably don't need a huge amount of lifetime for Drupal 8 when thinking about Drupal 9, whereas previously with Drupal 7, there's a bit more time up our sleeves because there are architectural changes and other things. Under Sorry. I'm not sure if it's just me. I think I'll see you dropped out for a second, but hopefully you're still there. Okay, so I've got another one. Yeah, I'm hoping so too. Yep, yep. Might be a little bit more controversial <laughs> here. So we've got this question about why is Drupal 8 end of life before Drupal 7? I think you touched on that a bit earlier. Yeah, so uh, as as far as I've been led to believe, um, and as I will subsequently pass on, um, Drupal 8 is very much the base for what Drupal 9 becomes. So with that thinking, um, instead of having to have three distributions running alongside each other, the ability to drop 8 out earlier should hopefully be a good thing. Um, and there shouldn't be a huge amount of change for people who are already using Drupal 8 with going to 9. Whereas 7, a bit more time up sleeves, figuring out whether eight will work for you, whether nine will work for you, or any sort of planning you have to do. So uh, I'm, ta I'm taking it as a positive thing. Excellent, thank you. So I guess the next question is really the, as, as hotly anticipated as a Hollywood movie, when is Drupal 9 going to be ready? When is Drupal 9 going to be ready? That's a very good question. Um, so what we're looking at, uh, at least from the GovCMS side, um, and we're working hard behind the scenes at the moment, and, and Joseph can attest to that, he's in the middle of all of that. We're hoping to have a Drupal 9 product ready on GovCMS uh, around April, possibly May, around that area next year. So all the work that Joseph and the, and the team are doing behind the scenes is getting our current Drupal 8 product ready for that 9 release. Um, if you've got anything you want to touch on there, Joseph. Yeah, so, I mean, like, yes, I mean, like, uh, Gauss MS9 is uh, currently under active development. I will update more later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to the, the technical bits and pieces a little bit down the tracks. Okay, so. Hot question there is when should I upgrade by? It's a very good question. 
So I suppose it depends on what you're working on at the moment, um, what you're working with, um, and obviously things like budget timeframes and a lot of other little considerations in there as well. Um, if we consider about sort of customers that we have on our GovCMS platform, um, it, and, and we've probably got four categories there. We've got people who work with Drupal 7 at the moment. Um, we've got people who work with Drupal 8 at the moment. And then we've got SAS and PASS under both of those. So when we think about some of those upgrades, um, those with 8, um, like I've already sort of attested to, there's an easier upgrade, upgrade path. So when we think about people who work in that sort of at 8 SAS space, then it should be a lot less painful, should be very simple, and hopefully not a huge amount of overhead in that space. Well, that's what we're planning for there anyway. Um, for those in those sort of past spaces for eight, um, once again, if you want to be out on the bleeding edge, that's there's, there's the opportunity to do so in that space. So if you want to start in that space, and we've got some customers who are testing and planning in that space at the moment, then they're free to go ahead. Um, with, of course, seven and whether it's SAS or PASS, I mean, I think there's the broader planning, that architectural change in, in differences between Drupal there is really important to obviously consider and take, and it's a real opportunity to take stock of everything you've got already. So even if you don't necessarily have a budget or don't have hard firm deadlines yourself internally for any of those sort of things, it's an opportunity to kick those things off now and review or stock take what you have, whether it's content, whether it's functionality. And of course, there's certain lifespans for sites. So some things might be able to be decommissioned, some might not. Some might need a bigger project or a bigger bucket of funding to deliver. So if anything, having that idea to sort of kick off now and think about where to go is really important. Um, and then from that, we do have some deadline material that we've put up on the GovCMS website um, for a broader sort of roadmap. But if anything, start thinking now. Um, and of course, the sooner you can kick those things off or once again, coming and talking to us about sort of direction in that space, um, there's a lot of how long is a piece of string? <laughs> yeah, no. um, more than happy to take a lot of questions offline about those things against specific projects. Yeah, you, so you, that's a good point to follow on after after this conversation. No, you've made some really good points there, Alistair, I suppose, especially about planning for it. So even things like uh, content audits or content reviews, things that you can kind of do now in preparation would be pretty ideal. And you also touched on budgets, I guess. That's one thing that uh, agencies should probably consider is, is it the time frame it takes to get budgets in order, even if you don't quite know yet, um, you know, that, that, that lead time to get a budget to then actually do the upgrade um, has to be allowed for considering the short time frames for next year. Okay, excellent. So let's see if we can get this going. So I guess this is the next one. What are my upgrade options? Now, Alistair, obviously there's a, what's your take on the SAS versus PAS approach here and how GovCMS sees this? So very good one. Um, there's a couple of things here. Um, and, and of course it touches to that sort of idea of planning and, and thinking about where you need to go with your products. Um, with this in mind, obviously from a, for those who are in that sort of PaaS space, I think there's a bit of thinking that for those who have got that more control there, that they can sort of, well, channel their own destiny to a degree. Um, but of course, that's not always the case. Um, from a SaaS perspective, I think that really does drive back to the, do we have budget? Could we account for a budget? Um, how complex is the material that we're trying to move over? Is it feasible at the moment? Is it feasible later in the piece? Are we going to need help? And are we going to need help from developers? Are we going to need help from other agencies? Are we going to need help from GovCMS? Lots of questions there. Um, for the most part, because of the differences between seven and eight, um, it's probably a really good opportunity with seven to go back, do that stock take, and then plan out to, to almost build out from scratch. Yeah. Now there's some, obviously some migrating options that allow content and material to move over. Um, I think one of the products that actually yourself Salsa have put together is Merlin. I haven't used it myself, but I believe it was part of a project last year before I joined GovCMS uh, in helping that's migrate right, yeah, some right, yep. additional sites to the GovCMS platform. So that's, and the fact that you guys have open sourced that as well, um, gives an opportunity to move some of that migration along there. Um, whether that's going to work for everyone and once again from a skill set. Um, but for the most part, there is going to be a need to consider 
to a degree to start from scratch with moving from seven to eight. Excellent. Regardless of whether it's SAS or PASS. Yeah, excellent. Unless you have a differing view, Joseph, and <laughs> and whether or not the chat has a differing view on that either. Yeah. So it's like I totally agree. It's like for the currently for triple seven side, it's definitely either upgrade to eight or nine. It will need a full rebuild. So it is time to think and start a plan. Yeah. So and, and just to go back, so um, the, the reason I suggest that, and a lot of that comes from my own background. So for those of you who haven't had the joy of meeting, discussing, emailing, phone calls with me as of yet. Um, I've actually moved from the finance web team, which also sits in departments such as GovCMS, uh, and we ran through a project to move several sites from seven to eight in that last financial year. So uh, that's exactly why I sort of attest to that sort of thinking, um, because it gave us an opportunity to go back and review old content, go back to business areas, and a lot of those sort of things that don't necessarily need a whole lot of technical people on board to do it, but just the ability to kick off that process and then line up later on with budgets, planning, and all of those sort of things. So, I mean, that's that's the school of thinking I come from there anyway. Excellent. Thank you for that sort of detail. Now, we've got only a few minutes left, so we might have to speed through. I think we're only about halfway through the presentation, but I'll try and get the, we'll try and get through quickly. So I think the seven and eight will be similar. But what is my responsibility as an agency, I guess? What, is, what does the agency have to do versus what GovCMS might be able to help with? Very good question. <laughs> um, and for a lot of those conversations that we're having at the moment with people on SAS, um, there is a mix of people in our audiences that are asking exactly that question. Um, some are more than happy to run off and, and do their own work, or even in my own background, we have the skill in-house to be able to do that outside of leveraging any need for GovCMS bar, obviously setting up new environments. Um, with that in mind, obviously, while we look after infrastructure and things like that, uh, and I don't want to put everything back on people, but there is there is thinking that if you are looking after a website or trying to drive a direction for something, that there is some ownership there and some planning ahead. Um, the sort of advent of the idea of someone who is a product owner, um, and now guilty myself in the technical space for GovCMS, um, is that there is a need to plan and think out in those spaces and consider the life, the life cycle of your products anyway. So there is a fair bit of lifting internally for that but at the same time if people are getting stuck i do want to have those conversations i want to know about those problems now because if there is something we could potentially assist with we have to know about it excellent excellent so just quickly going through so i guess this will be similar for seven and f8 but what what influences the complexity of, of a migration from i know seven will probably be a bit more of a journey versus eight but um maybe you can just touch on lightly what these influences might be uh, look, functionality, big one. Um, obviously, there's been some changes, and as I keep going back to architectural changes between seven and eight, um, obviously, what your site or what your product does. Um, if it's a very simple brochureware sort of product, then for the most part, it's potentially theming, it's bringing in content, it's making sure that your information and your presentation is validated, all of those sort of things. Obviously, on the other end of that sort of scale, how much data are you bringing in? What sort of tools, products do you have extended to that? So really having an idea of what your product does, do you still need to maintain and do that material? Um, and then going from that. Uh, of course, once again, lots of how long is a piece of string, but once again, really keen to talk to people about their projects and any concerns that they're having. Excellent. So I might throw this one to Joseph. So what happens if I have to upgrade, or whatever happens if I upgrade to Drupal 8 first? Uh, this is a really good question. <laughs> so it's like, as we can understand, it's like if you have a Drupal 7 site, either upgrade to Gauss CMS 8 or 9, it, will requ it requires a full rebuild. And uh, however, if you are already a Drupal 8 SAS customer, site the process of moving to drupal 9 should be relatively easy and our team we are working hard in this area since uh we don't want to maintain three distributions <laughs> yeah and you've got okay so good excellent um now i might skip through a couple of these questions i'm going to jump to something which i think uh might be a bit more of a hot topic is 
I think we almost get in there because there's a, there's a similar. So we have a seven, so I think they're going to be very similar. This one here is okay for for, for Drupal eight. Says what improvements can I make? Uh, of course, I mean like we are encouraging people to contribute uh, to uh, Gauss CMS, and not only to Gauss CMS repository through GitHub, but also uh, the site and the developers can also contribute to the contrib modules, which includes inside the current distribution for enhancement or improvement. We are encouraging the developers to do more, not only Gauss CMS, but also the contrib modules. So yeah, I guess so the, the eight and the nine jump are not as extreme as the seven to nine. So I guess still contributing to the modules will yeah. actually help going forward. So One quick really example idea. I can give is like, for example, Fizz import, which is being used for a lot of uh, Gulf CMS 7 sites. And however, it's still in the beta. So if the, if the developer can contribute this module and make it production only, we could add this module into the distribution. Excellent. Okay. okay. So and I'm going to jump into um, Paz now, and this is probably one for Alistair. So just jumping into Paz, what is my upgrade options and what is my responsibility, especially for the Paz? Is it quite different uh, as far as size goes? Apologies if my camera is bumping. My cat is insistent on being on my lap. Um, benefits of work from home to be twenty. Um, I always get bugged. Uh, <laughs> um, when, of course, we think about upgrade options here, um, because, of course, once again, going back to that idea of flexibility with PaaS um, and the, the fact that you can obviously include, attach, and, and build in whatever you need to make a functional product in that space, also then says, well, there's a bit of responsibility there for someone in that space, but also an opportunity as well. So some of the customers we're talking to who sit in this PaaS space are already planning those sort of things. They want to be in front of where we're at. And granted, if they are doing it for a smaller package of sites or a single site, go forth. <laughs> um, with that in mind, obviously, we're keen to talk about challenges that people are running into. So obviously, with things like exactly like what was just sort of mentioned there with Migrate, um, and of course, a lot of people sort of coming from a feed space, there's a bit of change there as well. So it's up to you, but I'm very keen to find out what problems are there, what opportunities are there. I do want to build out some more of this community space and figure out what people are trying to do. And if that benefits broadly more PaaS customers or even our SaaS people, then fantastic. Excellent, excellent. Now, in the interest of about a minute and a half left, I think we almost run out of question time. I'm going to quickly jump to Tech Talk. Joseph, this is for you, down to business about, I guess, the the, uh, the status of the distribution yep. for D9. I will give people a quick update. So yep. uh, yeah. currently, Gauss CMS9 is under active development. So our goal is trying to get in most of the modules across and provide the information around what needs to be uninstalled and the possible workarounds to the agencies and developers. And we are also uh, taking it as a good chance to do a code base spring clean. For example, we are going to replace some of the custom modules from features to Drupal config files. And we are trying to make the upgrade process from Gauss MS8 to 9 as easy, easy and smooth. But we, I mean, like one thing I want to recognize is like we shall also recognize that something are best left behind could be best practice. All these modules not well used. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. Excellent. Okay, I think we've pretty much run out of time. There was another question. I don't know if Alice is still, still there. So we may just jump. I don't know if we're going to have question time, but maybe if uh, you guys are available in the meeting hub so people can contact. I guess the, the main one would be that, you know, if anyone has any real questions, they can call the GovCMS team or contact, um, you know, GovCMS in general to ask any questions about the uh, upgrade at any time. Definitely more than happy to be killing that. And thanks everyone in chat for correcting me about why it's deprecated first. <laughs> um, th there's a multitude of reasons, but there's some okay. more factual statements there too. Um, but <laughs> depends on depends on the audience. So yeah, thank you. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you to the Gussian's team here. And if you have any questions, contact them. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.